like a delayed surge. Governor Newsom loosened up the California patient ratio and after just one or two shifts, they quit my first year of nursing. I know it's gonna be my hardest, but I didn't understand that it would be like this hard. Hey, what's up? Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jasmine and I am an RN in the emergency department. I am still considered a new grad because I have less than a year's experience. I've been working here for about like 10 months and I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on. If you don't already follow me, my username on Instagram is at JasmineNurse and I'll link it right here for you guys. So, as you may already know, it's been a really crazy time and with the pandemic, with the surge hitting California right now, it's almost like a delayed surge that's going on. It's been a wild, wild ride for us here, um, specifically in California. I really don't have any talking points like I never do and I just really want to talk a little bit about what it's like right now. First of all, I wanted to address um, the PPE. I know at first they were talking about the PPE shortage. Um, we still do have our N95s locked up. We do need to ask people when we need an N95. We can't freely take them. Um, we're taking stock of them. Um, and the one that I specifically use because it fits my face really well and I can wear it for a really extended period of time is the duckbill in comparison to the Moldex which is like really hard and it like sticks on your face. Um, and we're actually in a shortage right now of the small duckbills. In addition to that, we no longer are really using the poppers. Um, if you don't know what the poppers are, they are the big hazmat suits that we usually would use whenever we would swab or do any aerosolized procedure, which is putting us at high risk of getting the G COVID essentially transmitted to us. But yeah, so we don't really use those anymore. In addition to that, um, a few weeks ago, well, we had already been putting our N95s, dating them, and putting them in this bin. I personally am very against that. They do encourage us to essentially date, and if our mask doesn't have any makeup, they'll wash it and reuse it. And because I personally refuse to use a reused mask that's supposed to be a one-time use, I don't partake in that. I do not put it in the orange bin because I do not believe that we should be doing that because it's unsafe. I don't think it's completely sanitary. I'm sure that there's some science behind the UV rays or whatever that they use to sterilize it, but I will not partake in that. Another thing was at one point we were really low on gowns. Um, I wish I had a picture, but we're using like these plastic bag looking gowns now, which is honestly better than nothing, but we were running out of them at one point and they were asking us to essentially flip our gowns inside out and to hang them up and reuse them. I do not partake in this either because I don't think that this is safe. I think it defeats the purpose of even gowning up because it's essentially putting the bacteria on a wall or wherever you're hanging it when it's supposed to be thrown away prior to even exiting the room. So. That's another thing. <sighs> another thing I wanted to talk about is the very obvious short staff, high patient load, we're out of ratio and Governor Newsom loosened up the California patient ratio thing. And I, they, I got an email from UNAP, which is our nursing um, union and I'm specifically part of the one in the city that I work for and I'll post up some of the um, things that people have been saying. <sighs> for one, oh my camera's gonna die, hold on. 
I'm gonna switch the battery. One, we are, we've always been short staffed in the ED. I get in a notification for us when we work essentially like almost every day. Um, especially on night shift specifically. You can't tell work is already like literally draining the life out of me. I, it's hard right now. It's, I get that no one really knows what to do and I'm trying to understand and like be more understanding of the situation but there is just such a lack of order at some times and I feel like a lot of people in here are part of the nursing world and like to hear about these things and I always keep it real on my channel and I'm very honest about everything that's going on and very transparent about the struggles I go through, especially this being my first year of nursing. I know it's gonna be my hardest, but I didn't understand that it would be like this hard. Back to my point about how we're essentially short-staffed. Um, there are some specific units that are more short-staffed than others, specifically in my hospital. For one, there are DOU direct observation unit as one of our most short-staffed. So essentially they were down like a bunch of nurses do you patient ratio is supposed to be three to one that it's essentially like a step down icu they're pretty critical um to be honest with you the ones that i've been transporting to do haven't been as critical which i guess is a good thing um but they're definitely still sick patients so that unit along with our telemetry unit um i think our we have like a bunch of different telemetry units there's just based on acuity that we have a main hospital and then we have um a tower that's like across from the hospital that you need to be transported to and the main hospital is for the more acute patients that need essentially could possibly code and need more immediate care um so if it was really up to me to be honest with you, I would have all the COVID patients be within the main hospital because what happens to these COVID patients is they desat and they deteriorate so fast that I have no idea how they're getting them, getting to them all the way in the East Tower so quickly because COVID patients are generally okay when they first walk in, they walkie-talkie normal and then they decline like crazy. So that's just my opinion, but that's not the point. So, we've been short staffed in a lot of different units, but it's like a very controversial topic because um, we're going on a ratio, so they're offering people money because people are, for one, quitting, taking leaves of absences, and calling out. Because what happens is this like trickle effect where one, you're short staffed, so the staff that's already there is exhausted and tired. So what happens is the next day they call out. So the people who are on that next day are exhausted and tired because somebody called out because they were short staffed and they had to do the work of another nurse. So then what happens is this endless cycle of people calling out, you being short staffed, and it keeps going and going and going. And obviously the solution to it is how many people come in, which is why we have travelers. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But... I can't even begin to talk about it, but essentially what happened was that specific unit got like a thousand dollar bonus and it's a really controversial topic because I know their struggles and I know that it's hard for them right now and I know that they're constantly out of ratio and they're working really hard, but I thought that was a really controversial thing because us in the emergency department were constantly short staff were constantly ill resourced our lab no longer comes to draw our labs ever if we have a hard stick we figure it out um and on nights we don't have our ekg so we're essentially doing our labs our ekg everything ourselves which is insane so my problem with it is just the fact that i think what should have happened within my hospital was that if they were gonna go ahead and give this bonus to a specific unit instead of giving like a thousand dollar bonus what they should have done to keep their full-time staff happy and having this prevention of people quitting is to even it out and give every person like two hundred dollars so that you know to keep everyone happy so of course in turn a lot of people got pissed off people are quitting left and right taking leaves of absences calling out 
and it's just like a crazy time and I sound like Vanessa Hutchins when I say that but um yeah so in addition to that we have been out of ratio um I don't think it we've gotten the worst of it in the emergency department for sure I'm sure the units where they have COVID patients um our designated COVID units, that's where it can get crazy. Because it's, I can speak on the fact that it takes forever to don on and don off. Because you should never, never compromise your safety patient is coding. We need to don on that gear. We shouldn't be walking in there with nothing on. Or like just a surgical mask. Because that in turn will not protect you. And it's really frustrating because they expect us to take care of so many patients. Like in the ER, we get a variation of patients. And a lot of the times we don't know how critical they are until we get their labs back. Um, they get assigned a unit. So ICU is supposed to be two to one. DOU is supposed to be three to one. Three to one and then telemetry, med surge, and any other units will be four to one. Um, ours is generally 4 to 1 until we pick up a ICU or DOU because they're more critical but lately what's been happening is you get usually one critical patient and then three um, other patients so we'll have like an ICU and then like two mid surge or like three telemetry patients which is technically out of ratio because technically if we have a DOU, we should only be having three patients max. And that's what we were at least trained what's supposed to happen. But obviously because we're in this state of emergency, we aren't able to do so. And it's, it's really frustrating. And I hate talking about pay because I never ever talk about money. Because that's not what this is like all about. But it's getting a little bit frustrating that there's a sense of like... I don't know, just disorder and we do have travelers who have come to help with the staffing ratios and just staffing in general because even on my unit we've had like four people, not just on my unit, on my um, shift, we night shift is like really short, someone's quit, um, like four people have resigned and some people have taken leaves and it's just really scary because who knows like there's some nights where we're in this well we have different codes like code Kai is like we're shit's hitting the fan when you have that in addition to you being short staff it's really difficult um and i think the most difficult about i was talking about travelers i'll get back to that but before i say that i just want to talk about the fact that we're like it's hard in the ER because we are essentially stabilizing patients and trying to figure out what's wrong in opposition to other units where they're able to have the luxury of knowing oh they're negative or oh, they're COVID positive oh um such and such their labs are off they have this kind of history like they essentially we get a very short almost nothing report from paramedics. A lot of times they don't even speak um, English, they're altered, you hardly have anyone to be a historian for you. So we're walking in blind and I don't think people realize how difficult that actually is. <sighs> like solving this puzzle. Like, I could talk all about it all day. This is gonna be another story, but I'll save it for another time. On to my next point. So we have the travelers and I could tell you this long story about what happened with one of our travelers but maybe I'll save that for a, um, a different story time because I don't want to rat anyone out but it was pretty bad. I'll give you a short synopsis of what happened and it's essentially I had like my room was like 17 and his 18 and he had an altered patient and took her out of restraints without letting anyone know and she essentially yanked out her IV. I turned over and she's up covered in blood because of her IV was out. I don't know, she's probably a blood that is why she had blood all over her. And it, it was like three in the morning and it was like terrifying. It was like so scary. I was like, oh my God, like something like straight out of a horror film. But 
if you want to hear the rest of that story i'll tell you in another story time but we do have these travelers <laughs> And they are getting paid, obviously travelers pay, which is understandable, they don't have very much training within the short period of time that they're there, but <sighs> essentially a lot of our travelers are quitting and after just one or two shifts they quit and it kind of goes to show how chaotic and crazy and I don't want to say bad, but bad the hospital is doing because it's truly scaring away people from working um the travelers are quitting like on the doe unit they had a lot of short staff so they hired travelers essentially all their travelers quit um some of our travelers literally quit on the spot after their first shift and yeah it's crazy I wanted to talk a little bit about the hazard pay so I don't like talking so much about pay but because I'm seeing so many complaints about um, hazard pay and such I'm not getting hazard pay I don't think most healthcare workers at least in the state of California are getting hazard pay um, I just noticed how really bad my eye bags are and my dark circles um, Something that kind of, and I shouldn't be mad about it, but I kind of am, is the fact that I had seen a post about how someone was complaining about Whole Foods um, taking away their hazard pay and how they are putting their lives on the line for working at the Whole Foods place so they should be getting their hazard pay consistently and it should be permanent. Not once have I gotten hazard pay during this time of this state of emergency, this pandemic that they claim it to be. They are working so hard to manage the mass amount of people who are trying to get their groceries, to manage those people, to make sure that it's safe and clean and I appreciate their work so much because every day we need food, we need someone to manage the crowds. But not once have any healthcare workers in the state of California, at least at my hospital, have we have not gotten hazard pay unless you're a traveler. And every day we are this close, literally this close to someone who is COVID positive. And it's really frustrating for people to constantly just like call you a hero and do nothing about it and i get that it's a hard time and money and such but it's really frustrating to hear the fact that people are like rallying for hazard pay for grocery store workers and those other frontline workers and here we are healthcare workers literally inches away from like COVID positive patients, the virus that everyone is, the novel coronavirus that everyone is afraid of that shut down our economy and not give a f***ing damn. I understand that this year is supposed to be a, one of the hardest years of my nursing career and that I would be worked really hard and pushed to my limits and I don't even understand. It's like so many like days that like, I'm really pushed to my breaking point where I feel like crying <laughs> and all people do is sit back and watch you and say you're a hero and never really give a shit sometimes and I think a lot of the times even the patients themselves they get really frustrated at us and they're so demanding I remember I had a patient who was getting so upset for pain medications while on the other side I have this COVID positive patient, literally door to door, um, a COVID positive patient who was like desatting. And it's frustrating because I understand that they have like chronic back pain, but it's not something that's this pressing issue as someone literally like gasping for air. It's really, really frustrating and another thing was i remember when the travelers complained oh why am i taking care of clean and dirty patients so clean being non-covid patients and then dirty being covid patients and that's like unheard of to me i don't know if if someone else does if someone else's hospital does that somebody drop a comment because that would be 
so nice but then who would ever want to work with covid patients i guess you would like rotate but still i think this is probably where i should end before i like get too into it plus this video might be long already but i did want to just kind of give you guys an update because i know you guys really appreciate it when i'm actually honest with you guys and i don't hide all the bs so for those of you going into nursing this year as your first year i just wanted to give you a heads up of the hellhole that you're going to be walking into and everyone who isn't in healthcare and who's going to the hospital right now just please be kind to your to your healthcare workers your phlebotomists your nurses staff everybody especially those people who are cleaning the rooms that takes a long time and they work really hard so and those people i don't think they get hazard pay either which is insane that is going to be it for this video i probably missed a bunch of points that i was supposed to talk about because i went on this whole tangent but if you guys want to hear more about the stories about what's going on and what i'm going through during this pandemic and such go ahead and drop a comment down below and or you can follow me on instagram and shoot me a dm if you don't want to make it public but that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next.